According to airline's trade body, the International Air Transport Association, or IATA, SAF production needs to ramp up to around 450 billion litres per year by 2050, if the airline industry wants to be able to achieve net zero. Now, today, we're nowhere near that, producing about 1% to 2% of that target. Now, to talk more on SAF, we're joined by an expert, Sami Yawi Hainan. He's Vice President, Renewable Aviation, Asia Pacific, at Finnish Energy Giant, Neste. Sami, very good to have you with us. Thank you. A large focus of the aviation sector's efforts to mitigate climate change has been on sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. Yeah. Is this the right pathway? Is it the only pathway? It is the right pathway. Certainly, it's not the only pathway. I think the first thing to highlight is that aviation is a so-called hard-to-abate sector. We will need all solutions available to get to the goal of net zero flying by 2050. So more fuel-efficient aircraft, better air traffic management, maybe even electric or hydrogen-powered planes need to play a role. But uh, the fact remains that a large share of uh, aircraft will likely remain dependent on liquid fuels. And, and hence, the role of sustainable aviation fuels is so large uh, for aviation's climate goals. IATA estimates that 65% of the required emission reductions for the net zero goal need to come from the use of SAF. Okay. Neste itself is investing heavily to push SAF global production capacity up uh, to 2.2 million metric tons by 2026. Currently, it's only able to produce up to 1.5 million tons. Yeah, this year our production capacity will amount to 1.5 million tons, and uh, 1, million tons of, 1 million tons of that is already in place, and that is here in uh, Singapore. Uh, in our refinery in Western Singapore in, uh, in Tuas, which is the world's largest sustainable aviation fuel production facility. But yes, we have a high ambitions to continue that growth, reach 2.2 million tons by 2026, and then explore further in, in, uh, investments in, uh, in uh, increased capacity beyond that, to hopefully be over 3 million tons uh, by 2030. How is your biofuel made? Why is production cost so high? So we are using a technology that was actually developed by Neste ourselves in, uh, in the 1990s already. And, uh, and basically we are using oils and fats type of raw materials. Uh, waste and residue oils and fats like used cooking oil and animal waste fats. And then our process basically converts these raw materials to high quality fuels like renewable diesel and, uh, and sustainable aviation fuel. And the important thing in these fuels is that basically they are pure hydrocarbons. So we do need to blend the sustainable aviation fuel uh, coming from our refinery uh, with conventional jet fuel so that the share of uh, uh, our renewable component is maximum 50%. But after we have blended that and certified the blend, maximum 50% uh, SAF, uh, to meet jet fuel specifications, it's fully a drop in product. And, and, and what it means is that basically we can bring it to the airports utilizing all existing infrastructure, pipelines, uh, trains, trucks, uh, vessels. Uh, we can bring it to the commingled uh, fuel storage and uh, fuel to the aircraft using hydrant systems. And, and basically the aircraft, existing aircraft, existing a uh, engines can use it uh, similarly as conventional fossil jet fuel. But bio waste uh, SAF isn't the only way to go. There are various ways to produce uh, sustainable aviation fuels. There's uh, seven approved, ASTM approved pathways enabling different kinds of raw materials. I think I would say that uh, there's, there's three phases basically how the ramp up of the sustainable aviation fuel needs to happen over the coming decades. So the first phase there is to use the kinds of oils and fats raw materials that we have today and, and scale this technology and these raw materials to their full potential. Uh, the second phase is then to use different kinds of biogenic uh, waste and residue raw materials, forestry residues, agricultural residues, uh, municipal solid waste, and we expect that these technologies will play an increasingly big role already this decade. 
And then the third phase is exactly as you said, moving beyond biogenic raw materials, power to liquids, fuels, renewable hydrogen and captured carbon as raw materials for SAF, which will play an increasing role from 2030 onwards. But for now, uh, how soon before we see scalability uh, to see SAF prices be comparable to commercial jet fuel? The main challenge is that um, the cost of jet fuel really doesn't uh, price in the, the, the externalities, the, uh, the uh, environmental uh, uh, emissions that, uh, that it is causing. So hence the kind of comparison is not really apples to apples. And, and I think it's fair to say that as long that remains the case, that the emissions of uh, conventional jet fuel are not priced in, uh, there will not be parity. Uh, sustainable aviation fuel will be more expensive and, and hence we will also need this kind of uh, long-term regulatory policy frameworks that, that create the market uh, uh, for sustainable aviation fuels, enable the investments to increase production capacity and, and on the other hand enable the airlines in a competitive market uh, to use it without being in a disadvantaged position versus uh, competitors that might not be using the sustainable aviation. So supportive government policies is necessary. I mean, yesterday Singapore announced that it plans to introduce SAF usage targets funded by levies on air travelers. Yeah, this is really the, the main angle uh, and main need is that we will need significant investments in uh, sustainable aviation fuel production capacity. So, so Neste investment uh, into us that we completed uh, last year was 1.6 billion euros, that's over two billion uh, Singapore dollars. And in the coming decades, we will need much more of those investments, tens or hundreds of billions. And, and, and basically, uh, to enable that, we need market and demand certainty that uh, these investments eventually pay back. So government policy needs to create this kind of uh, demand certainty. In Europe, we have seen governments taking the avenue of uh, establishing blending mandates, uh, basically minimum requirements for sustainable aviation fuel use in the airports. Uh, Singapore approach is, is basically delivering the same outcome, uh, establishing a national SAF target and then this uh, levy to uh, fund the SAF use from the passengers and the centralized procurement uh, mechanism uh, basically to, uh, to deploy the funds for sub purchases. So from an investor point of view, I, I think these serve really the same purpose, uh, driving the enhanced uh, visibility of uh, market and demand. Okay, Sami, it's very good to talk to you as always. Thank you. And that was Sami Yawi Hainan, VP, Renewable Aviation APAC, Nesting.